We all have reason to give thanks to God for the many things that He does for us. Each one of you can think of things that God has done for you, that He's given reason for you to give thanks. I can't speak to those each of those personal ways that God has helped you. I can only tell you what He's done for me. I grew up a good boy in Samaria. I helped my father in his work. I attended the synagogue school where I learned the Torah. I learned the Shema. I learned all of those things that you're supposed to learn. I learned to hate the Romans for their oppression. And I especially learned to hate those Jews. The ones who insisted on taking the books of Moses and adding to them with other writings. And they worshipped in Zion and Jerusalem with a temple there instead of in Gerizim where you're supposed to worship God. And in fact, those Jews were so bold that if you would go, and I don't know why you'd want to, but if you did, there's a sign in the court of the Gentiles that says this is the place for worship by Gentiles and the foreign born. And that word, those words born and born, that was referring to us Samaritans. As if they somehow had more right than we did. We Samaritans are just as much Israelites as they are. Well, everything was going pretty well until, well, I can't really say that day because it just started out with an itch. And, you know, when you have an itch, it's not the sort of thing that is a major important thing in your life that you remember. But over time, that itch started to spread. And the more it spread, the more I started to worry. But my friends were praying for me, and I was praying. <coughs> and then my skin started to change. But my friend said, you know, it may not be leprosy, or at least not the bad kind. You know, there's that kind where your skin turns white, but you're still ceremonially clean, and it's not contagious or anything, and you just look strange, but it's okay. And so I hoped and prayed that that's what it was. Well, over time, it got worse. And then my hair turned white. That's always a bad sign. And then, and then I started to melt away. And I didn't want to melt away. So I went to the priest. I went all the way to Mount Gerizim. I went to the priest there so that he could examine me and determine what was going on. And as I waited, and as he looked me over, and I waited for his determination, I prayed and prayed that God would, would answer my prayers, that the priest would say, No, you're okay, go home. The only no that I got that day was from God. God turned his back on me. I didn't know what to do. You know, when you're in synagogue school, they teach you the Torah, they teach you the Mishnah, they teach you the, they teach you the Ten Commandments, but they don't teach you what to do when you find out that you have leprosy. That's not part of the curriculum. I wanted to go home, but the priest said I couldn't go home because then I would make my family unclean. I could make the whole village unclean. He said they would know when I didn't return. I couldn't even say goodbye. I didn't know where to go. But the priest told me that there was a village over on the border of Galilee and Samaria where there were some other lepers living and that I could go and live with them. Well, 
Okay, but then he said, but you need to know. Most of the lepers living there are Jews. Are Jews. How can I go and live with Jews? Well, I suppose to some degree it didn't really matter. Because there's really no point in arguing about where to go and worship God since we couldn't go to either temple. We were unclean. We couldn't go to the temple to perform the sacrifices for the forgiveness of our sins. We were cut off from God. We couldn't go to Him. Over time, it got worse. You know, it starts out, it's sort of like a cold sore. And then it spreads. And it gets wider and deeper. All the way to the bone. And then it keeps going. And it hurts. It hurts so bad. And then out over time, the hurting gives way to numbness. And you know, a lot of people think that the numbness must be a relief. But it's not. You prefer the hurting. Because as long as the hurting is there, you know that it's still there. I felt like the devil was picking the heart out. And I wondered, is he doing the same thing to my soul? Because every day I felt a little less human. And it seemed like the wrath of God himself was just slowly being poured out on me. I don't know how long I was there. It must have been years, but you don't keep track of time. It doesn't really matter. You're just there, and you're alone. And yeah, there's other people there. But not only are you cut off from the rest of the world, you're really cut off from each other too. Because lepers don't like to touch each other. For one, when you look like that, who wants to touch you? And besides, everyone's sort of afraid that if they touch you, that they're going to get it worse somehow. <coughs> and sometimes you think that maybe that would be better. That the suffering would be over sooner. But then when you think that God must really hate me for me to be in this situation. That, well, if I'm going to have to stand before God's judgment seat, and He's already written me off, then let's put that off as long as we can. Because then it'll be even worse. Well, one day, someone else came to the village. He was another leper. His name was Jacob. He told us about a rabbi that he had once met that had healed his father, who also had leprosy, before he had gotten. This rabbi's name was Jesus. And he was different. He was different from the other rabbis. He was different from the priests. He would go around and heal lepers. And not just heal them like some of the prophets could heal lepers, but he would touch them. Now nobody touches lepers. Even lepers don't touch lepers. Because if you touched a leper, then you would become unclean. But when Jesus touched the lepers, he didn't get unclean from them. His cleanness went to them instead. And he made them clean. Do you see what this means? This man is capable of restoring someone to God who has been cut off. Uh -huh. 
Well, one day, there was, well, we were up on the roof cooking our dinners. And we saw somebody else walking toward the village. And the first thing that all of us thought was, huh, another one, poor guy. But as he got closer, we could see that there was something different about this man. It was his hair. His hair wasn't white. It was dark, like other Jews and Samaritans. And as he got closer, we realized, oh, we need to warn him. And so we were all ready to shout, unclean, unclean, like you're supposed to. And just as we're about to start shouting to warn him, we hear a different shout. It's Jacob. And we hear his voice shouting out, It's Jesus! It's Jesus! When I heard him, I felt something that I hadn't felt in so long that I didn't even recognize the feeling. It was hope. I felt hope. And so, I didn't shout out unclean. Because unclean is something that you shout out when you have no hope. I shouted out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And so did everybody else. As he came closer to the village, he could see us. He could see who we are. He could see our hair. He could see our skin. He was being very deliberate about coming to us. And as he got closer, you could see his face. And I'll never forget the look on his face. It was that kind of look that a man has when he's bringing home a very special gift to his wife, like gold jewelry or something. It was that look that said, I have a very special gift to give, and I'm so excited to give it. It was like he could hardly contain himself with the surprise. And so he comes to the village, and it just sort of very nonchalant says, go show yourself to the priest. Well, let me tell you something. You don't tell a leper, go show yourself to the priest unless there's a reason. Now, granted, we didn't have anything better to do. It was a good couple days' walk. But what else are we going to do? And if we went to the priest and we were healed, that would be wonderful. If we went and we weren't, we were no worse off. <coughs> now, nothing had changed. But if Jesus said go, then we were going to go. And so we all started running as best we could. And it hurt so bad to run. But we did anyway. And, and I kept falling over because my feet were numb. I felt like I was walking on air and then I sort of thought, is it the hope that has me feeling like that? But I kept falling. And I'd pick myself up and I'd run some more and I'd fall because I couldn't feel the rocks under my feet. But as I ran, I started falling less and less. And I realized that it was because I could feel my feet. And the hurry was going away. And I stopped and I looked. And I realized that I was healed. He didn't even have to touch me. And he healed me. And so, I was all ready to run to the temple. And I stopped. 
Which temple? Now, normally I would go to Garrison because that's where you're supposed to go. Jesus was a Jew. Maybe the Jews were right. Maybe I should go to Zion. And then it dawned on You go to the temple to go to God. You go to the temple to get your sins forgiven. You go to the temple to be restored to God. Jesus had already restored me to God by healing me. So I turned around and ran back to the village. I never thought I would do that. And as I ran toward Jesus, I saw him smiling. And I dove at his feet. I almost knocked him over. And I was shouting, Hallelujah! Oh, thank you, Lord! Thank you! And he looks down at me. And then he looks out to the horizon. And he says, did I get ten? And only one came back to thank you. And that sort of winks at me. And he says, and the only one to come thank me was this foreign born. That same word that is at the temple, foreign born. It marks people to be separated. Jesus used that word for me. Because I wasn't separated anymore. I was no longer separated from people, and I was no longer separated from God. He said, go. Go home. Your faith has saved you. And I knew when he said that, he didn't just mean save me from leprosy. Because he had restored me to God. <clears throat> so I went home. And a few weeks later, the news reached Samaria that the Jews had killed Jesus. But then I heard that he rose again. Well, knowing Jesus, he used his death to restore everyone to God. And when I heard that he had risen again, I thought, you know, he saved me from death. Why not save himself? Even after the fact. That just seemed like the sort of thing that he would do. You know, the Jews in their writings, they have the belief that on that last great day of the Lord, that the dead will rise. After what Jesus did for me, I believe in Jesus' name. 